What's going on car family? I'm Ben Wayne. Thank you for joining me in another video. Today we are here because for the first time in nearly four decades, Mercedes-Benz has given a complete redesign to its G-Class. Those of you who are familiar with this car know that this car is something that just stays relatively unchanged. Since its introduction in 1979, it has pretty much looked exactly the same. In 1990, it received a new platform, but since its introduction, the bodywork has pretty much remained unchanged. But since the bodywork hasn't changed at all, that has not stopped this car from having a large cult following. As a matter of fact, in the summer of 2017, Mercedes-Benz sold its 300,000th G-Class. That is a ton of G-Class out there. So today, I wanna to get into the interior and exterior design aspects of this 2019 G-Class and see how this ride has been engineered for excellence. But before we get started, if you find yourself interested in this vehicle, please be sure to reach out to my friend Jesse Cannon Wallace of Atlanta Classic Cars. With that being said, let's go ahead and get to it. For those of you who are curious, this particular G-Class has been finished in a Dizinho diamond white metallic paintwork. Now your interior is done in macchiato beige with a beautiful black Napa leather. Let's talk about the letter G for a second because apparently that seems to be extremely important to Mercedes-Benz as all their SUVs start with the letter G from the GLA, the GLC, the GLE, and the GLS, and then you have the G-Class. So what does the G and G-Class mean? The G stands for Glendewagen, which means cross-country vehicle in German. So now that we've talked about some of the key basics, let's go ahead and hop into some of the design characteristics of the all-new 2019 G-Class. Taking a look at the front, not much change here, but that's part of the overall redesign. People love this car so much I remember that when I first heard the G-Class was gonna get redesigned, I was upset because I'm like, how can they possibly change this automotive icon? Well, the thing is Mercedes-Benz has incorporated a lot of changes without taking away from the overall design or changing the definition of what the G-Class is. So up front, you have your traditional Mercedes-Benz grille. You do have all new LED headlamps that look pretty cool when they're on, especially with the daytime running lights. This ring illuminates and it looks pretty cool as well. Now coming further back, these huge turning signals are still here on the front fenders, but there's been a slight change. And that's the fact that Mercedes-Benz has brought the G-Class up to pedestrian safety standards. So when these turning signals come in contact with a significant load, they've been designed to pop off for safety reasons. Now coming further back, the windshield now has a slight curve to it. And that's something you truly have to see in person to notice. But if you're familiar with the previous generation G-Class, you know that all glass was completely flat. But for 2019, there's some slight curvature in the front windshield. Taking a look at the side profile, you'll notice that it remains relatively unchanged. But I will say Mercedes-Benz did increase the overall length of the G-Class by 2.1 inches. More importantly, the width has been increased by 4.8 inches. This gives the car a larger footprint and makes it more stable when on the road. Coming back to the side profile, you'll notice the glass on the sides remains flat. Remember the G-Class was originally intended to be a military vehicle. So flat glass is easy to replace in the field with wood paneling, it's easy to repair, and it's also easy to bulletproof. So that is the history behind the use of the flat glass on this car. And I'm glad that is an aspect of this design that they did not change. Diving a little bit deeper, Mercedes-Benz has made the 2019 G-Class 375 pounds lighter than its predecessor. And that's thanks to the extensive use of aluminum and ultra high strength steel within the car's body structure. The result is a car that is 55% stiffer over the previous model year. Taking a look at the rear, the G-Class remains instantaneously recognizable. Now you do have all new LED tail lamps as well. And of course your spare wheel remains in the same place it has always been with a beautiful wheel cover on this model finished in Dizinho Diamond White with a contrast black paintwork. Looks excellent. Now let's open the rear door. So once you open the door, you'll notice that the interior panel of the door has been finished and that beautiful macchiato beige leather. And of course you have a ton of storage, which is expected of a G-Class vehicle. When you take a look at the exterior design of the 2019 G-Class, you might notice some of the panel gaps from the previous generation are now smaller and any protrusions from the exterior of the body have been minimized as well. How does this affect this car's drag coefficient? We define drag coefficient as a dimensionless quantity used to quantify the drag resistance of an object in a fluid environment. So the drag coefficient of the previous generation G-Class was 0.55. 
What is the drag coefficient of this new G-Class? It remains at 0.55. Why is that? Remember at the beginning of the review, I stated Mercedes-Benz made the new G-Class 4.8 inches wider. So any increases in aerodynamic efficiency were negated by that additional width. Now with all that being said, people aren't buying this car because of its sleek appeal or its drag coefficient or fuel efficiency. This car is simply brought because it's a luxury statement. It has remained traditional and constant and has stood the test of time throughout various decades. Jumping into driving dynamics, the new G-Class features four different driving modes. You have Eco, Sports, Comfort, and the all new G-Mode. The new G-Mode is able to adjust the damping of the chassis, the acceleration, and steering to prevent any unnecessary gear changes. This is gonna give you precise maneuverability up to the inch while climbing or going over rough terrain. And of course, you have your three differential locks, your center, front, and rear as well. The wheelbase of the 2019 model has grown by 1.6 inches when compared to its predecessor. This is gonna give you a larger footprint on the road, increasing overall stability. Now, another major component that's new is the suspension, which has been designed in collaboration with Mercedes-Benz and AMG, even though this is a non-AMG vehicle. Your front suspension is now a double wishbone design, which is designed to give you comfort without sacrificing the G-Class's all-terrain capability. Now in the rear, you have that traditional rigid rear axle. Now let's talk a little bit about the G-Class's off-road capability. Up front, you have 10.6 inches of clearance. Now at the rear, you have nine and a half inches of clearance. Now why is the clearance at the rear a little bit less? That's because you have to make room for that housing for the rear differential. Now your front approach angle is up one degree this year. It's 31 degrees up front. Your breakover angle is also up one degree. It's now 26 degrees and your departure angle is 30 degrees. Now with all that being said, the G-Class is able to climb 100% slopes. Essentially what I'm saying is this car is capable of climbing angles up to 45 degrees. Since we're talking about off-road capability, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the waiting depth. Now the waiting depth is defined as the deepest amount of water the vehicle can take on. Now with over nine inches of clearance, the G-Class has a waiting depth of 27.6 inches for 2019, as opposed to the previous model year, which only had a waiting depth of 23.7 inches. Now with that being said, let's talk air induction systems. The G-Class features a primary and a secondary air intake. Now the primary intake we're all familiar with, air comes in straight through the grill. But when off-roading, the G-Class has a sensor that will close the flap to the primary air intake if the water level gets too high. And when the flap is closed, the secondary air intake, which sits above the radiator supports, will immediately come into play, allowing you to keep on going through the water. Since we're underneath the hood, let's go ahead and talk about the power plant. So you have a four liter bi-turbo V8, which is capable of 416 horsepower and also 450 pound-foot of torque. Now the turbos are located within the valley of the V. And if you've been with this channel, you'll notice that this concept is starting to branch out into different places of the automotive industry. For example, the Lamborghini Urus we covered had the same configuration. The benefit to having the turbos in the valley of the V is a more compact and efficient design and also decreased turbo lag. Now this power plant is also connected to the new 9G Tronic transmission. So the old seven speed transmission is gone. The new nine speed transmission is here, which is smoother and more versatile. So with all that being said, Let's listen to this car's exhaust note. So since we covered the exterior details and listened to the exhaust note, let's go ahead and check out the new G-Class's interior. Sitting in the interior of the new G-Class, you can truly feel that additional width we spoke about earlier. In the previous generation, when I sat in that car, I felt like I would be rubbing the passenger's shoulders or invading their privacy by simply using the shoulder rest. The interior spec of this particular G-Class is pretty nice. It features that macchiato beige leather and the black napper leather as well, and then fiddleback Dizinho Ashwood trim, which looks really great. Starting at the top of the dash, it's covered in black leather you do have now dual 12.3 inch display screens. So you're starting to see a little bit of that technology from the S-Class coming to the G-Class. In previous generations, I always felt like the G-Class was five years behind the S-Class, but these dual 12.3 inch screens 
bring it up to date and they just look great. I love having a nice large display for the navigation and the instrument cluster and being able to see the settings without having to squint or be too distracted from the road while driving. Coming further down, you have two air conditioning vents, just twist to open or twist back to close. And of course, your three differential locks we talked about earlier. Further down, you have controls for your climate control, an analog clock, and new for 2019, two cup holders. If you remember the previous generation G-Class, you just kind of got this basketball hoop looking thing that hung off the side of the center console, but now you have two actual cup holders. So let me push this back. Coming further back, you have controls for your command system and your dynamic select button to cycle through the different driving modes we discussed earlier as well. Further back in the center console, you have storage with two USB ports as well. Coming over to the steering wheel, it has that steampunk design we're starting to see in a lot of Mercedes-Benz vehicles. I really love the bright work and how it pops out at you. You also have those two touch pads that allow you to adjust the instrument cluster or control your infotainment system as well while driving without being too distracted. Behind the steering wheel, you have two thick aluminum shift paddles for downshifting and upshifting. And of course, that vibrant 12.3 inch digital display for your instrument cluster we mentioned earlier. Everything in this car just fits nicely. It just feels well done. Mercedes-Benz truly took their time with redesigning this interior of this car. I would go as far as to say this is the most drastic change for 2019. Coming over to the door panels, you have controls for all four windows and your side view mirrors, your macchiato beige Napa leather accents, and then controls for your power seats with three levels of heating as well. You have an aluminum door handle and Burmester speaker grills throughout the interior of this car as well. And of course, some storage on the bottom of the door. Now, one thing I wanna make mention of is we talked a little bit about the overall length of the G-Class being extended, and you can truly feel that when you sit inside. Up front, you have an additional 1.5 inches of legroom. It doesn't sound like a lot, but you can truly feel the difference when sitting here. You don't feel cramped as you did in the previous generation. The seating up front is extremely comfortable. I really love the macchiato beige leather and the stitching on the seats as well. Now the seating does feature aggressive side bolstering. So while you're going off-roading, it's gonna hold you in place so you won't be flying all over the cabin. But the seats in general are pretty comfortable. This is definitely a car you could take a long trip in. Sitting in the back, you'll probably notice one of the most significant updates to this interior. If you sat in the previous generation G-Class, Let's all admit, that car was cramped when you sat in the back, but now you have an additional 5.9 inches of legroom. I'm about 5'11", and I feel quite comfortable sitting behind the driver's seat. Now that additional legroom was made possible by extending the wheelbase and also moving the second row of seats back a little bit. So it's quite comfortable back here now. You could actually sit here for quite some time and not feel cramped. The door panels are covered in leather. They feature that macchiato beige leather insert as well. And you also have controls for your heated seats in the back. You have that Burmester speaker system and of course storage on the bottom of the door as well. The overall interior of this car has come so far when compared to the previous generation. It just makes it feel like a completely different vehicle on the inside. All the while maintaining the overall theme of what the G-Class has always been about. Wow. I even love how Mercedes-Benz made sure they retain that sound whenever you close the car. There's certain things on this vehicle that shouldn't be changed, and that is one of them. And speaking of items that haven't changed, the only items that are a carryover from the previous generation are your headlamp washers, your sun visors, your door handles, the vents on the D-pillars, and the spare wheel cover. Let me know what you guys think about this car in the comments section. I've been waiting several months to get my hands on this car for review. I would like to give a special thanks to my friend Jesse Cannon Wallace of Atlanta Classic Cars for making this video possible. Please be sure to contact her if you're interested in this Mercedes Benz or any other model. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell and I will catch you in the next one.